Last month, we revisited some cool British singles released in July 1966. Now, it's time to take a look at some great British singles released in August of that year, and August 1966 was a particularly excellent month for singles. So without further ado, let's begin. August 1966 saw the release of one of the Small Faces' greatest singles. The song, which was written by Steve Marriott and Ronnie Lane, became one of the definitive mod anthems of the 60s, and it became the band's first number one hit in Britain. Record Mirror wrote, This is rather a moody but very clever presentation with massive sounds behind the voices. Heavy beat, and some excellent lyrics to boost a strong sound. Musically, it's perhaps their best yet but it may need a couple of plays to register melodically. The B-side was another excellent track called Understanding. The single reached number one in Britain, and it remained in the top 40 for 11 weeks. In the States, the single failed to chart. August 1966 also saw the release of Yellow Submarine and Eleanor Rigby by The Beatles. Both songs were taken from the Revolver album, which was also released in August. Yellow Submarine is one of the most well-known songs by The Beatles. But I think most of you will agree that Eleanor Rigby was the highlight here. And at the time, the British press also seemed to share this opinion. Disc magazine journalist Penny Valentine wrote, The only thing that really befuddles me on this record is why both sides are top sides when Eleanor Rigby is such a superior song. It is of outstanding beauty, the best song the Beatles have ever written, and whoever wrote the words, and I suspect it was Paul, shows remarkable insight into the life of the lonely. It is miles above Michelle and yesterday in poetic quality, it is a desolate and moving picture of utter loneliness. I can only assume that the nutty yellow submarine was just added to stop all of us from jumping off Waterloo Bridge. When asked about the song, George Harrison commented, We all think it's a good commercial single. I like them both. Yellow Submarine will probably appeal to old age pensioners and that kind of mob, whereas Eleanor Rigby will probably only appeal to Ray Davies types. The single reached number one in both the UK and in the States. I walk along beside the garbage man. I Dig Everything was David Bowie's final single for Pi Records. Just like all his previous 45s, the single was a commercial failure, and this resulted in the label dropping him. But Pi Records didn't seem too interested in promoting the single, no ads were published in the press, and the single only managed to get this small review from Record Mirror. Bowie's previous 45s were very influenced by bands such as The Kinks and The Who. This song, however, had a much more commercial poppy sound. The B-side was a track called I'm Not Losing Sleep. The single failed to chart. Another excellent 45 released in August 1966 was this single by The Who. I'm a Boy was originally intended to be part of an ambitious rock opera called Quads, which was to be set in a future in which parents can choose the sex of their children. Pete Townsend eventually decided to scrap the idea, but the band decided to release this song as a single. Record Mirror wrote, Clever lyrics, appealing but hard-hitting way of selling them, and the usual instrumental brash crashing. An obvious hit, and already well plugged on television. The flip side was a track called In the City. In the city on the south of the city and they go. This song is the only song credited to the songwriting collaboration of Keith Moon and John Entwistle. The single reached number two in Britain and was also a big hit in Germany. In the States, it failed to reach the charts. I feel good. And good, good. The Artwits are one of the most underrated British bands from the mid to late 60s. The band featured future Deep Purple member John Lord on organ and Ronnie Wood's older brother on vocals. 
This single from August 1966 was one of the best 45s they ever released. Record Mirror wrote, Harsh-edged sounds instrumentally, but a floating off-beat vocal line on a song that might make sales noise. Sexy scene. Unfortunately, the single was barely promoted, and it sank without a trace. Oddly enough, several musicians who would later become members of Deep Purple released new singles in August 1966. A group called MI5, which featured future Deep Purple members Rod Evans on vocals and Ian Pace on drums, released their first and only single in August. Episode 6, another band which featured future members of Deep Purple, also released a new 45 in August. The single was a rather mediocre cover of this Beatles track from the recently released Revolver album. Needless to say, none of these singles managed to chart. Another highlight from August was this excellent single by the Coobas. This is yet another single whose B-side was way better than the A-side. Face was an excellent freakbeat number which was slightly reminiscent of the sort of material that bands like The Creation were recording at the time. The A-side, a song called Sweet Music, was a decent track. Turn up that sweet, sweet music. But the single would probably have fared better if Face had been released as the top side. Record Mirror wrote, This could easily make it, although not now tip. A good beat, brisk intro, and capable vocal attack. It builds beautifully and deserves to do well. Despite getting a fair amount of airplay on pirate radio stations, the single failed to chart. When I come home, tell me all about it. Spencer Davis and Company welcomed August 1966 with this song penned by Stevie Winwood and Jackie Edwards. The song got mixed reviews in the press and was generally regarded as inferior to the previous 45s by the band. The B-side was an instrumental by Winwood called Trampoline. This instrumental number has been featured on a few Northern Soul compilations over the years. The single failed to replicate the success of their two previous 45s, which both reached number 1. But it still reached number 12 in Britain and remained in the top 40 for 8 weeks. Another pretty cool 45 released in August 1966 was this single by a band called The Bunch of Fives. The Bunch of Fives featured the legendary Viv Prince on drums. Viv Prince was the original drummer for The Pretty Things, and he became well known in Britain in the mid 60s for his hellraising ways. The drummer single handedly got The Pretty Things banned from ever performing again in New Zealand. The band's disastrous tour of New Zealand, which took place in August 1965, ended with a completely drunk Viv Prince almost setting fire to a theatre in New Plymouth. This single by The Bunch of Fives is yet another example of a single in which the B-side was the highlight. Record Mirror wrote, The Bunch of Fives are powered by Viv Prince, drummer publicist extraordinaire. And where the said Viv Prince is involved, there's usually something happening. What's happening here is that they have made their first record with Parlophone and they're backing up their solid sound by individual clothing that adds visual eye-crunching impact. The single, as you're probably already guessing, failed to charm. And speaking of the Pretty Things, this band called The Fenmen featured future Pretty Things members Wally Allen and John Povey, who both played a major role in the Pretty Things transition from a rhythm and blues outfit to the psychedelic band they became a couple of years later with the release of their cult classic SF Sorrow. The Fenmen got their start in the early 60s as Burn Elliott and The Fenmen, and they scored a top 20 hit in 1963 with a cover of Money by Barrett Strong. 
This excellent single from August 1966 shows the band embracing influences from groups such as The Birds and albums such as Pet Sounds. The single, however, went pretty much unnoticed and didn't mean a thing in the charts. You gotta see the way that's treating me is so unkind. You better stop if I'm gonna stay or maybe you will find Those of you who watched this channel series on British singles from 1967 may remember this band called The Game. The band had a song called The Addicted Man which got banned by the BBC for supposedly being in bad taste and the two singles they released in 1967 sounded about 10 years ahead of their time. In fact, it wouldn't be strange to mistake them for punk singles from the late 70s. The band was formed by five kids from ages between 14 and 16 years old, and this 45 from August 1966 was their first single. It wasn't as aggressive as their later sonic assaults, but they already seemed to get close to the aggressive sound that they developed a year later. The B-side was a song called Got Away. Got away, way you got the single was produced by Kenny Lynch, and despite Kenny's attempts at promoting the band as the next big thing, the single failed to reach the charts. Sorrows had a minor hit in 1965 with the song Take a Heart, but the band's inability to reach the charts again and the major competition that existed in Britain prompted the Sorrows to move to Italy, where they enjoyed moderate success. Their single from August 1966 was a good rhythm and blues number called Let Me In. Record Mirror wrote, Big Beat literally thundering from the first bar, wailing guitar and commercial grunts from a husky lead voice. Excitement seekers will dig it. On the other hand, Penny Valentine wasn't too thrilled about the single. The journalist wrote, One of the worst records I have ever heard. It starts off with a strange panting man who keeps making sounds as though someone is standing on his foot. The whole arrangement and guitar parts puts us back about three years. The single didn't chart. Most A-sides by the Tremolos were blatantly commercial pop numbers aimed at teeny boppers. But many of their B-sides from that period were actually excellent songs that proved that the band was way hipper than their A-sides would lead you to believe. This song called What A State I'm In was a fantastic number with a strong up-to-date sound and some great fuzz guitar. The song was featured as the B-side of Good Day Sunshine, another mediocre cover of a track from the Beatles' Revolver. Good day, sunshine. Good day, sunshine. August 1966 was filled with covers from the album, and some of these covers were released the same week or even the same day that the record came out. This was mostly due to the fact that Beatles publisher Dick James would always send advanced copies of Beatles albums to various labels hoping that bands and artists would cover songs from the record. Of course, every time a band covered a Beatles track, Dick James would shake his moneymaker. And Lennon and McCartney would also get some decent royalty money. Good Day Sunshine was covered by at least four or five bands. Apart from the Tremolo's cover, the song was also covered by groups such as The Eyes. We take a walk, the sun is shining down, burns my feet as they touch the ground. Here, There and Everywhere was also covered by bands such as the previously mentioned episode 6 and the foremost. Nobody can deny that there's something the most bizarre Revolver cover released in August was this version of Yellow Submarine by a girl band called the She Trinity. Their cover of the song almost sounded like a lost recording by the Shags. And we lived beneath the waves in our yellow submarine. We all live in a yellow submarine. I'm still not sure if this cover is complete crap or utter genius. And the band begins to play. 
Most covers were very mediocre and not worth talking about, but there were a few exceptions. Cliff Bennett and the Rebel Rousers released a marvelous soul cover of Got To Get You Into My Life. The track was even produced by Paul McCartney himself. McCartney originally intended the song to sound as a tribute to Motown and all the soul music that influenced the Beatles. And the Beatles' own version of the song is a great pop tune in its own right. But the Fab Four failed to capture the soul sound that McCartney had in mind. This was mostly due to the fact that the horn section sounded more like a military band than a soul band. Apart from that, grooves and soul beats were never Ringo's forte, and the drums lacked the swinging and funky sound that a soul song requires. The Beatles' inability to capture the soul sound that McCartney had in mind was the reason why Paul decided to produce this soul version by Cliff Bennett. Cliff Bennett's version of the song succeeded in getting the kind of soul sound that McCartney had in mind, and the song got excellent reviews in the press. The single became a major hit, reaching number six and remaining in the British charts for 11 weeks. Another exception was this excellent cover of Taxman, which was one of several Revolver covers that came out the same day that the record was released. The song had a great soul sound, with added percussion and Hammond organ. It was a highlight among all the forgettable covers released that month. But unlike Cliff Bennett and the Rebel Rousers, the Loose Ends failed to reach the charts with their cover. I hope you enjoyed this trip back to August 1966. See you next time.